All right, on the bench today is a uh, portable oscilloscope. This was sent into the channel for review. Uh, this was sent in by uh, Finerci. Uh, it is their 1C15 digital hands handheld pocket oscilloscope. Um, 110 megahertz analog. Oh, that's interesting. It says 110 megahertz, 100 megahertz analog bandwidth. Oh. Why don't I just call it a 100 megahertz scope? Anyway, uh, 500 megahertz real-time sampling rate. Um, make, a, uh, make a samples per second. Let's see here. What other things can we get off of the box here? Uh, everything is in Chinese. Here we go. This is not in Chinese. Uh, screen resolution 320 by 240. Accuracy plus or minus two percent. Rise time less than three nanoseconds. Input resistance one meg ohm. Does have a does have a BNC and it comes with a real oscilloscope probe. Um, let's see here. Blah 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 blah. Time base five nanosecond to ten seconds. Uh, Where's the vertical? Uh, 20 millivolts per division to 100 volts per division. Voltage measurement range plus or minus 40 volts. And if you put a times 10 probe on, <laughs> then you get plus or minus 40 volts, uh, 400 volts. All right, so came with a, this was kind of thrown into the box extra. So they, they threw in a, uh, some type of uh, case to put it in. I doubt that it was a design for this thing, but it does come, like I said, with a, a true oscilloscope probe, BNC, 6100 has markings on it. Um, yeah, standard standard probe. Uh, what else does it come with? It comes with a uh, another cable in case you want to have clip leads. It comes with a charging cable. Uh, comes with a charger. <laughs> I happen to get the European version, but that's okay. Uh, all right, so let's uh, turn it on, run through some paces, see what it does. All right, so first of all, it has a uh, USB micro connector on it uh, for charging. Uh, it has a switch on the bottom, a little slide switch. It's a little bit crude. Slide switch. has a, has a kind of a crude LED on the bottom too that shows you when it's charging. Um, but yeah, it looks like any other one of these type uh, these uh, portable things. Oh, it's got a little flip out, uh, little flip out thing. Oh, that's nice. Good for, for good for my photography today. So yeah, let's uh, hook it up to uh, a, a, a function generator and uh, see what kind of waveform we get. All right, I'm going to be using my Rigel uh, uh, function generator. So uh, let's hit the auto button and see, I have it hooked up to a one kilohertz sine wave. Let me hit the auto button and uh, let's see here if I get my uh, ground attached. My ground ground lead, ground lead wasn't quite attached correctly. There we go. We'll hit the auto again. There we go. So sine wave. That looks good. Now the um, Buttons on the thing are confusing. Uh, this could be definitely improved. The vertical size is set with these two buttons. And you would imagine it would say like vertical, up, vertical, down. And um, it, so it does exactly what you think it should do, right? It gets smaller and it gets bigger, except the buttons are labeled millivolts and volts. <laughs> So anyway, I guess if you have small things, you hit this button that makes them bigger. If you have big things, you hit this button that makes them smaller. So anyway, uh, they are laid in the up-down direction. And then side to side is the same thing. The buttons are labeled seconds and nanoseconds. And they're just basically horizontal uh, divisions per second. They're just labeled really stupid. Um, so that's that's the way that works. So So here's your horizontal. Uh, per division, here's your vertical position. Uh, it has some measurements, which are teeny, teeny, tiny and hard to read, but they are there. Oh, geez, duty cycle, mean, RMS, max, min, it gives you everything, width, frequency. Yeah, everything's there. Let's turn that off. That's annoying. 
um, times 10 times 1, so we got times 10 probe. So now we're at the smallest. This is the most sensitive range this machine has. It's uh, 200 millivolts per vision with a times 10 probe. 200 millivolts isn't, isn't a whole lot. But um, I'm giving it plus or minus uh, a volt, or actually one volt total, so it's uh, 200. So it goes 245, 245, uh, 100 millivolts, right? Okay, uh, let's go ahead and give it a more complex waveform. Uh, square wave looks nice. Triangle wave looks nice. And then let's go to my favorite uh, torture test here, which is the sync pulse. And here's the sync pulse. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Let's uh, zoom in on it. Yeah, look at that. That's a nice looking sync pulse. All right. So it's doing well with that. And it's triggering well on it. Sometimes this confuses triggering circuits of some uh, some oscilloscopes, but this one's triggering just, triggering just fine on it. And the uh, the sync pulse is um, symmetric. It looks the same on both sides, and it and it should. Let's increase the frequency a bit. We're at one kilohertz. Let's go to a hundred kilohertz, and we'll have to zoom in on that. And we're still looking pretty good. All right, let's go to a megahertz. One megahertz. Let's zoom in. And we're starting to get some bumpiness now. Now this is caused because of the poor sampling of these, uh, you know, low-cost oscilloscopes. Um, it is not sampling exactly the same every time. And so you're getting this sample error between the frequency of the thing you look at and the frequency of the samples, and you'll start to get this wiggliness um, here. Let's go back to a uh, let's go back to a ramp. I think ramp is one of the better uh, ramp, and then I'll hit the auto button. There we go. So are we getting? Yeah. You get a little bit of deviation in the trigger too because of the sampling sampling thing. Let's go up in frequency here. Let's see what we can get up to. Uh, we need to go to sine waves to go much further on this particular device. I'll look up a different a different uh, machine later. Let's go to one megahertz and uh, now you're going to see some. Uh, I think you can see that uh, there's some hair fuzz on the signal. It's getting fuzzy, uh, which is the sampling sampling of the thing. So it says it's a hundred megahertz, um, hundred megahertz uh, scope. So let's take it up here. This generator will go to 25 megahertz. So let's uh, let's zoom in on 25 megahertz. And you can see it's it's really failing at 25 megahertz. We're getting we're getting just really really lumpiness out there. Yeah, we still see something, so, you know, it's able to see it, but is it able to measure it accurately? No, um, but it is giving you, it is giving you some indication that there is some signal, and if you hit the measure button, it says it's at 20, 25 megahertz, so, 20, somewhere between 24.8 and 25 megahertz, so, um, So that's pretty good. Uh, I don't think I would use this scope much, much past uh, 25 megahertz for sure. Uh, we can take it up higher. I'll have to find a different uh, uh, frequency source to take it up past uh, up past 25 megahertz. Um, let's see what else do we need to know? Uh, other buttons. There's the times 10, times 1, AC/DC coupling. Auto button. This seems to be working just fine. Uh, there's a single single sweep, so if you push the push the button, you get a single single trace each time. The stop button is the start stop, actually, so you can you can freeze on something, start stop, and then there's a menu with a whole bunch of settings. Um, 
I'm not going to go through them. There is this strange button here that's kind of nondescript. So it is a, a little toggle button. You push it up and down and you can get the uh, thing to go up and down. And then if I go side to side, it has some memory. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Um, so you can scroll around. See, we, yeah, see, so we're going. If we stop, then we can kind of look at, here's our trigger event, you, little tiny little thing there. See the trigger event, you can look before and after the trigger, so it's a nice digital oscilloscope, so that's good. Um, yeah, what else do we need to, uh, we need to do? Uh, let's see, 50%, that's probably the trigger point. Yeah, trigger point. Um... It'll do, you know, rising edge, falling edge, all that kind of stuff. It is a scope. Um, it's very responsive, so that's good. Really, the only downfall right now is at high frequencies, it just doesn't have the triggering. Let's go back down to uh, 5 megahertz and see, uh, see if it's well behaved at 5 megahertz. Yeah, see, at 5 megahertz, it's still, it's still bumpy, right? I'll hit the auto button here. Yeah, it's still it's still bumpy, very, very bumpy. Um, let's go down to one megahertz. One megahertz. And there's our bumpiness gone. Now our bumpiness isn't gone. It's just a little bit of fuzz there. You see if we zoom in and then uh, arrow over, you can see we're still getting that bumpiness up there. So um, yeah, I don't expect great things out of it, but it is a good price. Um, I suggest you search the internet for this thing and look for the best price. Uh, there will be a link down below from the uh, manufacturer. Um, yeah, it seems pretty nice. Um, it's got some rubber, a rubber, a rubber thing around it. Keep, keep it from breaking if you drop it. Uh, there's a little, little thing here at the top. Let's see if that's an actual an actual signal. Is that an actual signal? That might just be for calibration. Oh no, it's actually a, uh, yeah, there is actually a square wave coming out of this, this little thing here. You can clip your, uh, clip your scope to. Let me put the, uh, let me put this back on. Yeah. There we go. And we can arrow that around, put it in the center here. That looks good. Zoom in, zoom out. And there's a, a, a adjustment on the uh, scope probe here to it, but it looks like it's uh, well adjusted already. It has a nice, nice square edge to it. All right, so I think the only other test that I wanna do on it is maximum frequency. Um, I will have to get out a generator that goes up to 110 megahertz and uh, we'll give it a try. All right, I'm just gonna use my little generator over here. It outputs, uh, outputs square waves. Um, we have a 40 megahertz, it'll, it'll go down to 35 megahertz. So we'll start at 40 megahertz. Uh, obviously the square wave has been turned into a sine wave because it does not very fast. And so let's go to uh, 50 megahertz. 60 megahertz, you can actually read the megahertz right here on the screen, 60, 70, oh. Ah, my power connector has gone funny on my, uh, on my thing here, just a second, sorry. I just lost my generator due to a power glitch. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's getting really lumpy now. You can see, uh, you can see there's kind of some undulation on, uh, undulation on the signal now. That's as fast as the as the sweep will go. We're we're at just 60 megahertz, 70. Uh oh, let's see here. 80. Getting small. 90. Uh, 100. Here's 100 megahertz. So, it it it. It shows something that's super, super small. It's super, super wiggly. Let's keep it going. 
Oh, it just broke. Yeah, it just broke. So 100 megahertz, it, 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 it will allow you to see 100 megahertz. It says 110 on the front. But here's 110. Okay, does it see 110? Let me hit the auto button. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty bad. That's pretty sad. But anyway, so yeah, it's not 110 megahertz oscilloscope. Certainly is 100, uh, I mean, a 1 megahertz oscilloscope. Um, usable above that, if you don't mind the wigglies. Um, it only goes down to 200 uh, millivolts per division, which is, uh, you know, okay for a lot of DIY projects, you know, Arduino projects and stuff, five volt projects. You're looking, you're looking okay. All right, so yeah, so that was my review of the one uh, Finercy 1C15 pocket oscilloscope. Yeah, there you go.